Knock, knock. Who's there? Figs. Figs who? Figs, your doorbell is broken. Uh... <laughs> Great. <laughs> um... <laughs> I asked Chris if we could do a knock knock joke first, and um, he didn't have enough time to say no. Actually, before yeah. we went to broadcast, so. That's accurate. <laughs> so we had to do one. Um, well, here we are on jokes night. Chris and I had a rather trying day, I would say, in various yes. ways, and so um, a jokes night night is probably good for us to do right now. Um, we're got, glad to be playing tunes instead of playing other things that we were playing earlier today. Yeah. Um, this this will be a this will be a much more f fun uh, activity this evening. So, um, thanks for coming. Uh, our leaders tonight are um, John Redmond and Matt Stapleton. We should probably have another cheers for that because probably they're the dream team. Yeah, and a good one. Woohoo! Oh, -ho! nice. That's from Anonymous, right? Yeah. Um, yes. So they I call them the dream team, and they've been doing. I don't know how many sessions they did before our summer break last summer, but since then they've been doing um, every 10. Uh, by request, they've been on the 10s. And unfortunately, this one, I couldn't get them to be right on 70. So this right. is number 68. So they're they're right. a little early. They're a little early, which um, we're not complaining about because um, they're my favorites. And they have a lot of great jokes to tell this evening. Indeed. Last week, I mentioned that the jokes that we were going to tell should be... Um, they, they can be dirty, but they have to be classy dirty. Mm -hmm. And there's a few classy dirty jokes that they tell yeah. in, in, the, in the session yeah. materials, which is like a real session, yeah. I think. Um, okay, so uh, get out your best jokes. I'm going to ask for your best jokes later. You are, of course, free to put them into the chat right now if you want to. But I'm gonna, yes. there's going to be a, a part where you can share all your best jokes a little bit later. Um, and Chris and I are both bad at jokes, I just want to say up front. This I is don't a, even know I, any jokes. I know, it's a terrible, it's a terrible theme for it's me. It's a really bad theme for us. <laughs> I always forget great jokes I've been told, but the strange thing is I remember who told them yeah. and the moment that they were told, but I can't remember the joke. For example, I remember that Niall O'Leary told this brilliant joke up in Alaska on one of the summers he was up there. And I remember thinking to myself, that is the best joke I've ever heard. And of course. I bet that um, Martina Kogan tells great jokes. Oh. Yes, story jokes, probably. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And um, Q from our show yeah. tells some of the best jokes. She tells anti-jokes. They are anti-jokes, yeah. that's true. It, it would be hard to describe them. Yeah. She has to do it. It's yeah. not funny unless she does it. Yeah. But. Okay, so let's get started with a few tunes. I think people are filtering, it, filtering in, grabbing their um, their chairs here. So uh, when I was selecting this, the tunes for tonight, I was trying to think of tunes that had, um, if not joke jokey names. There, there's not so many jokey names in Irish music, but there's strange names and right. funny names. So right. I was trying to pick some of those sorts of tunes. So the ones I came up with um, were The Cat Strambles to the Child Saucepan to get started. Second one, Pull the Knife and Stick It Again. And then the third one doesn't have a strange name, but it is kind G minor, at least the, Sorry, the way I, I play it. What's that? I just had the sound oh. muted for a second. Sorry about that. Oh, that's right. So the last one is Patty Fahis. It's kind of half in G major and half in uh, um, G minor. Yeah. There's lots of different versions to this tune. Um, I think Martin Hayes uh, played it most famously, but um, I just started teaching it to my level six students this past week. So I was thinking we could give that a shot. Sounds good. Um, and just uh, just don't stick to one of those keys. Don't be don't get wedded to G major yeah, or G yeah. minor because it, it switches around really quickly. But we'll we'll get going on those to start with. Okay. <laughs> okay, not too fast. Hashtag not too fast. Uh, first one is in the key of D major. Uh, one two three four
I'd say it's mostly in G no. major, minor. No. no. No, it's in both. It's in G. It's mostly in both. G ish. It's mostly in both. <laughs> That's kind of the joke version of a tune, although it's not a joke of a tune. It's a really awesome tune, yeah. sort of tune. Um, I wonder if anybody out there who's not in my advanced class knows that tune, actually. I learned it when I was growing up in Fairbanks. It was on a record. I can't remember which one, but I rarely hear it played now. It's, it's a great tune. Yeah. Um, like the other Patty Fahey's tunes as well. All fantastic. Yeah. They're all great. They're I think great. I only heard you play that the other day when you were yeah, I was teaching it to your class. Because... I have taught the Irish Art Center class so many times now that I have trouble finding new tunes to teach them. Yeah. Um, I've taught it 34 times. 30, 34 semesters? Yes. Wow. I'm, 60, I'm 65 now. <laughs> no, there's three semesters a year. Right. Um, okay, anyways, so we'll go on here. People are already putting lots of great um, jokes into the, into the chat. Um, I just want to highlight one from Jim Kerr, who's going to be... Um, uh, performing later. He's couple one sets, of, yeah. Couple he's sets one of our special guests, yeah. and he is a juggler. Um, I remember him juggling, actually, from the time I was very young, and I would go down to Anchorage to, to fiddle or play with his uh, daughter in the Suzuki program. Jim has juggled on the session before. Yes, that's right. Oh, that's right. Yeah, Last summer. Long time ago. Yeah. yeah. Well, he, he wrote, um, I just started reading a book on anti-gravity, and I just can't put it down. And that is a joke, however, when I read it, I thought, of course he's reading a book about anti-gravity. He's a juggler. Like, yeah. I thought it was a serious comment, but yeah. it's actually a joke. So we're off to a good start. Harris Rothman has a three-part joke, which I haven't even gotten a chance to read yet. This is great. Now, don't use up all your good jokes just yet, because we might have a little joke contest coming oh, up a little bit later. Great. But we will read all of those as we go to our uh, first set from the leaders tonight. I mentioned a moment ago that the leaders are John Redmond and Matt Stapleton and... Um, do they do a joke for every set, basically? Well, I will have to find out. Oh, well, okay, okay. I think they're, they're very, very serious. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, yeah. it's very serious. All right, let's go okay, see what they have for the first one. How are you doing, Matt? How's everything, buddy? Everything's good, John, yeah. Um, what are you up to? Oh, I'm just sitting here doing my taxes. Really? That's, I'm doing the same oh, that's thing. that's funny. Matt, I was wondering, do you, ever, do you ever lie on your taxes? No, never. I'm always 100% honest on my taxes. But you? No, 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 I, I'd never lie on them. But this year I'm having difficulty in remembering the um, the names of my 42 dependents. Uh, John, do you know the camera, uh, the Mary O's crowd's watching us right oh, now? Oh, oh. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to the session. Uh, my name is John Redmond, and with me this evening is uh, Matt Stapleton. Uh, Matt, how are you doing, buddy? I'm doing well, John. How are you? Yeah, doing good. Good. Um, we're going to start off with a few reels. First one is called The Earth's Chair. Second one is called Galway Rambler. And the last one is called The uh, Torn Jacket. Especially for the uh, Mirio's gang. Uh, Matt B minor, G, D, 2, 3, 2. One, two, three, and...
was a woo to it, um, woo. unexpectedly. Um, excellent start to the evening, especially on the joke front. Yeah. That was pretty good. I hope it was a joke. I don't know. I hope it was a joke. Let's, let's assume it was a joke. <laughs> um, I got my taxes done, actually, I have to say, and that's not a joke. I did not. One of the first times I've gotten them done early. Yeah. And the deadline got extended. So I feel yes. really on top of one thing in my life, and that is taxes. I asked my accountant to file an extension, and then like the next day they they, they extended that. it. So did so. What happened with that? Like I don't know. it just I got. I haven't looked into it. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. It's gonna this, be a while. Yeah, this has been a, a strange year for everything. Um, okay, so we have a few people who are checking in in the chat from. Fiddle Hell. Fiddle Hell. Um, yes, it's happening right now. It's right? happening right now, and I suspect that's why we have a few less people here than than normal. Because they're in hell. Because they're in hell. This must be heaven, then. Yeah. Maybe. Um, and so, hello to everybody over in Fiddle Hell. And actually, uh, coincidentally, that is what I have on my notes to say next is that Fiddle Hell is happening. Um, it is an excellent, extremely packed weekend of workshops. Um, this is their website. It says 200 workshops, 35 concerts, 35 jams, and there's um, 100 instructors in all sorts of different genres. And actually, um, a cat is on the um, on the faculty. Did you know that? I saw that. Cora, K Capo. Capo the cat, right? Yeah, Capo yeah, the cat. I did see that. Um, and I think that Toast might make an appearance. Good. Also, Excellent. there's like Capo has a bio and also classes that. Capo's like teaching. an official instructor. Right? Yes, yeah. on the on the instructor list. So. Um, it's happening right now. I'm not sure what's going on today. I am not on the program for today, but tomorrow morning at 10 a.m., which is past my bedtime, um, <laughs> um, I'll be teaching <laughs> at 10 a.m. A class on, uh, what am I teaching? Fiddle techniques, I think. You should probably figure that I out better before figure 10 a.m. <laughs> I'm teaching something at 10 a.m. and then something at 1 p.m. And then it goes on from there. There's a ton of stuff. So go over there and check it out. I know that they um, were, were wanting a few more registrants and it is not too late to sign up. The good thing is uh, everything that they're doing, the 200 workshops, uh, is available for three months afterwards. So even if you don't get to it today today or this weekend, you can, you can look at it afterwards. Um, I was going to put the link in the comments here. Um, there's a concert, there's like an Irish concert, I think, on Saturday night. Or maybe it's just a big concert hmm. that I'm playing on. Unfortunately, Chris is not going to be playing with me because he has to go to the bubbles. Uh, I think we might, I might be able to do it. But not the concert. Not the Saturday. concert, yeah. yeah. But the jam thing. The jam on yeah. Saturday. Yeah. Oh yeah, there's a jam on Saturday afternoon. Just go check it out on the website. I can't, because I can't remember all the details, but yeah. it, it should be really fun. So, um, hello to everybody who's stopping by and thank you for stopping by. Um, okay, that was all I was going to say there. Should we go hear another joke and some more tunes? Yeah. Okay. Let's see what John and Matt have. Hey, Matt. Matt, you're a marriage counselor, aren't you? Yes, I am. Licensed professional marriage counselor. Um, okay, because I was wondering, would you be able to help me? Um, my wife asked me a strange question the other night, and, uh... I didn't even know that you were married. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I've been married for a long time now, yeah. <laughs> So she said to me the other night, John, if I died, would you remarry? And I said, I said, we're not having this conversation. I said, it's too morbid. And she said, no, I've been, I've been thinking about it recently. Uh, if I died, would you remarry? And I said, I said, yeah, I, w I would. She said, oh, okay. She said, but where would you live? Would, would you live in this house, in, in, in our house, or would you buy a new house? And I said, I, I, I love this house. So I said, we'd move into this house. Yeah. She said, well, what about sleeping? She said, would, would you guys sleep in, in our bed or would you buy a new bed? I said, no, I, I, I like that, the bed also. I said, yeah, we'd sleep in the bed. And she said, my golf clubs. She said, my prized golf clubs. She said, would, would, would you allow uh, your wife to use my golf clubs? And I thought about it and I said, no, no way would she use your golf clubs. I said, uh, you're right-handed, she's left-handed. Uh -huh. So I think I'm in trouble, Matt. Mm. And I was wondering, would you be able to help me? Uh, well, in my professional opinion, no, okay. I can't. Hear All that. right, well, well, thanks anyway. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. I suppose uh, to forget about that conversation, so let's play a few tunes. All right, so... Um, Let's play a Amerio's favorite, uh, Timmy Clifford, Stan Chapman's, and the Miller's Maggot. All right? Nice clip. G A G. Mm -hmm. 
A classic nice Mario's tune. I don't know where TJ is. I know. That first tune, I always think, is yeah. TJ's tune now. Yeah. Um, and I also now imagine him sitting there playing Varun while wearing the, the red Clifford suit. Yeah. Um, so I hope he's doing okay. Maybe he's out flying. Well, probably not. It's, probably not. it's a little rainy, me. actually, here. That's yeah. true. It is a little, it's pretty nasty today, actually, and cold. It was nasty. We were not prepared. 
No, we were not prepared for anything to happen for today. Anything, nothing, yeah. nothing at all. Um, okay, my mom is here. I just want to note oh, because Hi, um, I thought she wasn't here and I was going to dock her attendance points. Um, but then it turns out that she was. Maybe she was in the back of the classroom, uh, the back of the pub, yeah. having a drink yeah. by herself. Yeah. Um, nice to nice to see you, Mom. Um, I wonder if it's what's the temperature up in Fairbanks. I'll have to I'll have to get her to tell us because I saw some folks in Colorado said it's still snowing like five 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 more inches today. Yeah, so I saw somebody on in Fairbanks posted on Facebook that the other day it was minus twenty and today they were setting up their porch swing or something. <laughs> oh jeez. So. I'm not oh, sure what that geez. means. Actually, it probably could mean it's still minus 20. That is true. That is true. And um, I know some of you attended the virtual Alaska Folk Fest last week, um, which is in Juneau usually. And the strange thing, so I've been going to, to that festival since I was 11. It has never snowed at that time in Juneau, ever, uh, um, beginning of April. Um, and this year it was completely snowy. There, I got pictures, I think, from Mike, who's, I think, here. Yeah. Tons of snow on the ground, yeah, having to go out and shovel the snow. Like, like it last time we were in Juneau for Folk Fest, it was like gorgeous. Yeah, beautiful, sunny. sunny. And yeah, we went out on the water. Very strange, very yeah. strange weather. I, Alaska had a cold winter this year. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's see. Oh, uh, an a, a interesting and strange and cool tin supply announcement. Yes, this uh, cool thing happened. And we didn't. We were confused about this actually. Yeah. For some time, but um, we, Chris and I, got emails asking if we um, wanted to be, uh, if we would accept a nomination for an award. Um, uh, and we said yes, and but we didn't really realize what the award was or how it worked. It's um, awarded by the Irish Echo, which is a newspaper here in New York, and um, uh, it's. It, I thought it was just an arts and culture sort of award, but it, but they're calling it Hero of the Pandemic, which I actually don't think that we are heroes whatsoever. That distinction goes to obviously first responders and frontline workers and grocery store workers and all those sorts of folks yes. not us but there is an award that that they are that are they are going to to award <laughs> shortly and it's based on voting <laughs> which so is this, it's, in reality it's just a big popularity contest it's a popularity contest not an award but right. um if you if you so desire to vote for us um you can and i'll put the link here in into the chat there's the little poster that they made I think there's a, a award ceremony. Oh yeah, Friday. That's coming up soon. So here's the link, and you can vote for us or for anybody else. There's a, like 20 or more folks who are nominated for I for think this award. Niall O'Leary is also. Oh nominated. yeah, Niall, and some other people that we know actually. Vote for Niall. I can't remember. Oh, New York School uh, School of Irish Dance, who we made yeah, some tracks yeah, for. Yeah. So there you go. If you want to vote, great. I have no idea what the prize is. Uh, there might not even be a prize. Actually, we got that little prize in the mail over yeah, there. We, did we get got a like a little other, medal or yeah. something. We should be wearing it. <laughs> Anyways, okay, so there you go. That is not a joke, although it kind of sounds like a joke. Um, I'll remind everybody if you if you are able to throw a few bucks into the jar, which oh, yes. is which is here. That um, helps I, us pay all of our special guests, our guest leaders. Yes. Helps keep Toon Supply in operation. Yes. And um, the link is also down in the comments, and I'll put it into the into the chat as well. I saw some people already uh, contributed, so thank you for doing that before we even asked for that. That's very kind of you. Yes. And um, there's probably there may be some changes to the schedule coming up, and we'll let you know as those happen um, due to this filming that's coming up. But for for next week, I'll just let you guys know we are going to attempt to do the session with Chris and I in two different locations. We think it will work, but we won't know for sure until Saturday. Yeah, we have to do some testing. As of right now, we're, we're going to try to make that work for next week, and then we'll let you know as the schedule goes on because it gets a little tricky. Um, but there could be some interesting technological either um, marvels or malfunctions. Yeah. <laughs> this, anything could happen. <laughs> okay, so our guests tonight are some folks close to my heart. They are Alaskans from Anchorage. And um, I grew up playing Irish music with, uh, with them in sessions when I would go down to Anchorage for various Irish music events. And I also, as I mentioned, grew up playing music with their daughter, who is a great fiddle player and violinist. So they have sent in two sets, and we think that this is the first time a hammer dulcimer has been featured on the session. Is that right? I think so. I think so. I don't want to commit to that, but I think. Pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. Because um, uh, Denise plays hammer dulcimer and Jim plays guitar. So please enjoy this first set of tunes with them.
Amazing. I love Hammer and Dulcimer. Love that. Um, when I was little, my mom, um, well, actually for a long time, my mom had a little string instrument supply shop that we ran out of our house. Right. Um, I think that was where I got my first taste of of uh, bus- being a business person. Mm-hmm. My mom would have us do like inventory, which we hated, but um, uh, and keeping the books and all that sort of stuff. It was great. But one of the things that she uh, purchased for us uh, because she got like a little discount on some of the things was a couple of different folk instruments that we didn't know how to play. And hammer dulcimer was one, oh. and also mountain dulcimers. You oh, know, the kind yeah. of long ones. Yeah, yeah, those are cool. Yeah. So I didn't even know that a hammer dulcimer was a thing. I thought it was mountain dulcimer. Really? Until like. I don't know, probably like... The Folk early, Fest? No, oh, no, like probably like when I was in college. Then. Oh, yeah. yeah. I was a completely different instrument. I know. Yeah. And I was just like, if anyone said dulcimer, I would just think of the, the mountain, mountain dulcimer. dulcimer. Yeah. yeah, hammer dulcimer is, is really, yeah, really cool. great. Yeah. Um, we never, my sisters and I never got very good at any of those things, but I have to say the hammer dulcimer was the most fun to play around on. With yeah, it. Like, It's yeah. just such a, such, a, such a fun instrument. We also tried to play the harp, the Irish harp. Oh, how did that go? I played it in the talent show in fourth grade. Cool. Uh, that was the extent of it. I played guitar in my talent really? show. Yeah. Well, you actually know how to play the guitar, though. Not really. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. I think there's a guitar under the couch, actually. Maybe no. you should get it out. Uh, no. <laughs> Let's not do that. <laughs> um, anyways, thank you to Jim and Denise. And they're going to be back for another set of tunes shortly. And I saw an amazing comment from um, Jason in Florida, from Florida I Man. think. From hashtag Florida Man. Yeah. Um, he said that he met Denise in... Anchorage in 1995. Probably it must have been the Galway days. Well, that's what I thought, but I'm pretty sure that Galway days did not actually start until 2001, oh. I think, okay. or two. So it must have been something else, and I don't know what it would have been. Denise or Jim, maybe you can tell us what I'm. Maybe, maybe the Anchorage, did, uh, maybe the Anchorage Irish Festival or Alaska Irish Festival. Hmm. Did they? I don't know. That's very, very cool. Yeah, um, cool connection. Very cool connection. Um, okay, so at this point. Um, on my notes, it says that Chris and I should tell our favorite jokes. Now, as I mentioned, we don't, we don't know any jokes. I didn't prepare any contribution. I prepared one, but already forgot it. So I actually took a screenshot of it earlier so that I could read it. Okay. And it's not my joke. I just found it. Okay. But it's Alaska related. So I thought it'd be good. Okay. Um, a moose walks into a hotel lobby in Alaska and starts eating the plants. The hotel manager comes over and says, quote, do you know it's legal? It's sorry. I've already messed up the joke. See, this is why I can't do oh, no. it. Juno, it's illegal to eat the foliage, don't you? And the moose looks at him calmly, still chewing, and says, quote, Nom, 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 nom. <laughs> That's why I'm not allowed to tell jokes. Okay. Do you want to attempt one? No, thank you. Okay. Well, this is the point where we would love to hear your favorite jokes. I know you've already put some jokes in the comments, but I love hearing them and I and reading them and all this sort of stuff. Yeah. I, they just don't stick in my head for some reason. No, I don't know I'm why. a terrible joke teller. Yeah. Unless it's like a one-liner that I can remember, but I can never remember it at the right time. I know. So. I know. I, some people have the, the skill and some people don't. Yeah. Our friend Romano is good at oh, that. Oh, Romano's good. Yeah. Romano's good. A couple of people on the show are good at, yeah. at jokes. Um, anyways, if you want to put some jokes in the comments, um, if there's any great ones, we could award a prize, I suppose, a mm-hmm. t-shirt or something like that. So so give us your best joke and, and we'll, we'll see what we want to do. Or your favorite tune printed on a label. Yeah, we could do... Even fa- better than a t-shirt. We haven't done labels in a while. <laughs> we do have... Can you see this? Uh, tunes printed on mailing labels. You know, highly was, useful. You know what we saw the other day? Actually, Chris found it on the interwebs. A sticky note printer. Oh yeah, this is a new thing that Amazon made. That sounds great. That sounds great. We could print tunes on sticky notes. On like yellow post-its. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's for next time. We do have these as a prize. Uh, and of course, we have T-shirts and things like that. So, so tell us your best jokes. Um, I see that Matt Stapleton is here. Hi, Matt. Hey, Matt. He wants to start a guitar band with me. Oh, that'd be fun. Well, that sounds great. And also, you know what? Um, you should invite Neil Perlman. Oh, um, to start a piano band. And you should also play the fruit instrument. What's the fruitophone? The fruitophone, yeah. Uh, the oh, what was your name for it? Photosynthesizer. The photosynthesizer. The photosynthesizer. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> okay. Okay. Let's have some tunes. <laughs> Let's have some tunes. Okay, John and Matt are going to do another set of tunes while, while you guys tell us your favorite jokes. Welcome back, everyone. How are you doing, Matt? Matt, you're looking very... Uh... I don't know. Very content. Very, very happy with yourself. What's going on? My friend asked me if I wanted a frozen banana. I said, no, but I want a regular banana later. So 
Yeah. Oh, uh, oh, all right. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, enjoy that. Um, okay. So, can we play a few tunes? Yeah. And, um, yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. <laughs> we are going to play. That, that's kind of thrown me off completely now. Thank you, Mitch. And, uh, we're going to play three reels. First one is called farewell or goodbye to Ireland. The second one is called the hair is Paul. Paul. And then the last one is called Spoot is Scary. All right, so DGG. All right, Matt. Here's to all the frozen bananas. One, two, three, and... Great tunes, great jokes. Okay, I'm feeling better about the day now. Me too. It's only what? 
nine and the day is starting to get good. This is, this is excellent. Um, okay, I, there were a lot of great jokes. I don't know if I can pick one that I like the best. Actually, I, I, there's three that I like. Okay, I'm gonna say them really quick. Okay. Um, Gordon Nash, a dyslexic walks into a bra. That's a good one. <laughs> it's really good. Um, Brian Murkison has a very um, timely one, as he said. And I, it, you have to really think about it, yes. actually. It okay. took me a second. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm going to say it, um, I think. I, I don't know if I have the pronunci- pronunci- pronunciations right. Um, it is, someone asked me what I thought about Moderna. I said, I love her, and Lady Gerger, and Beyoncé, too. <laughs> That's very clever, and um, there's one more. I mean, there's so many good ones that I like, but I also like James Cleveland's, yeah. which is slightly PG-13, but that's okay. Um, a pirate had a steering wheel sticking out of his trousers. I pointed this out, and he said, "I, it's driving me nuts." <laughs> Excellent. Do you have any ones you want to read, um, or no? No. Okay. <laughs> Well, there's been a lot of good accordion and banjo jokes, which I'm always, there always up for. There always are. Like, what do you call a perfect pitch? That's uh, when you toss the banjo into the dumpster. Yes, I feel like the banjo and accordion jokes are the um, trad equivalent of viola jokes that right. we often tell yeah. in classical music. Yeah. Um, yes, I also saw a whole bunch of good ones. Um, or the best way to play a baron yeah. with a knife. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Or Kaustuf, um I think it was Kaustuf who said, um, uh, what happens if you... Do badly in fiddle hell oh, behind yeah, you an yeah, accordion. Yeah, yeah. yeah if, you, if you flunk out of fiddle <laughs> hell or something, yeah. <laughs> That's great. Okay, there's too many jokes. We'll keep um, reading good ones here. If one really pops out, we'll, we'll award a prize here. In the meantime, it is already halftime. We're doing really good on time here. Right, perfect. Um, and so that means we have a poem from Mimi. I don't perfect know if there's time. any jokes because I haven't seen it yet, but maybe we'll see. We'll see. Here we well, go. TJ's finally oh. here. Oh, hi, T- TJ. You missed your tune. You missed, your tune. You missed it. We'll We're going to have to play it again. Watch it later. <laughs> okay. okay. Here's uh, the poem. Hi, Mario's friends. Uh, uh, an especially lame uh, poem this week to help pa- bring some attention to Tune Supply. The Irish Echo is having an award vote, so we need you to vote, okay? Uh, tonight, we will urge you to all cast your vote for Caitlin and Chris, an award we promote. Tune supplies running, so for them we are gunning for arts hero of the pandemic. That's all she wrote. And that's actually all I wrote. Uh, so the the Irish Echo, I'm hoping that Sarah or somebody will be able to put the link in the in the chat, but they're having this thing, this vote. So at first you could vote early and often. Now you can just do the early thing. They're not allowing repeat votes, unfortunately, and I, I tried. So, but please do vote for Caitlin and Chris for Tune Supply for Arts Hero of the Pandemic. If ever there were an Arts Hero of the Pandemic, it's Tune Supply and Caitlin and Chris, right? Speaking of heroes, Mary is continuing to um, deliver uh, Shepherd's Pies to folks in need in the neighborhood. This week, she delivered 180 shepherd's pies to the Bowery Mission with help from Sarah Pearl and some other folks. So please chip in if you can. They cost, I think, $16 a pie, and she will um, she brings them in batches of 60. So they've done a lot, and it's, it's a great way to help her help others. Hope you're all staying safe, and thank you so much to all of our guests, John and Matt especially. Always a pleasure to have them back on on the session. Hope you're all um, masking up and getting your shots, um, getting your vaccine. Don't be afraid. And uh, see you soon. Eat your kibble. Bye. Okay, I just thought of a new product for the Tune Supply store. Hats made by Mimi. Oh, just with like those. The, with the birds, It's yeah. printed, vote tune supply, That's and great. then the bird sticker in the middle, and it's on the brim of another hat. I think it's great. And we yeah. could have dog hats as well yeah. for sale over yeah. there. We could make vote <laughs> tune supply t-shirts. Yeah. Like the, what is that, the Napoleon Dynamite t-shirt? Oh, yes. Vote Pedro. Yes, that's right. Except vote, vote, vote um Avocado. Vote avocado. <laughs> vote avocado is what the shirts will say. And we then they won't be printed until after the vote is done, so it'll be... Right. <laughs> Great. Um, Mimi, thank you for, for announcing that. Thank you um, for mentioning that. Appreciate it. Uh, I put the 
uh, the direct link into the comments. I had been just putting the poster link, so I put the direct link. I think, I think that you can vote once per day per IP address. I could be wrong. Perhaps mm. Mimi's right that they changed it. But Sarah I think Pearl right. had said, um, yeah, if you vote on different devices, you oh. can vote multiple times. So get out all your devices, <laughs> all of them, and vote. <laughs> this doesn't seem like a very good way to it's award an award. Very scientific, it's not very scientific. It's not very scientific. No. Maybe it doesn't matter. Um, I don't really like popularity contests in general. No. But um, what, the, what the heck? Anyway, what the heck? Thanks it's, for voting for us. Thank you for voting it for us. certainly can't hurt. No. <laughs> no. And, okay, I just want to say that there are tons of other amazing people there, on the list. It's like a the huge list. list. It's massive. a huge list. Yeah. Um, and so you should vote for anybody and everybody who you think is amazing. You could probably just that. go down the list and vote for everyone, right? I think if you did it on different days, you could do that. Great. Just well, to, we recommend that. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Um, okay. There's so many good jokes. I still haven't chosen a favorite one because they keep coming in. And I'm just going to say one right now. It's very short. Peter Morley. What's long, brown, and sticky? What? A stick. <laughs> <laughs> That's an anti-joke. That's my kind of joke. Yeah. I might remember that one, actually. That's a good okay. One. Um, so no prize yet. Keep going with the jokes. Uh, we have a really cool um, second or third, I guess, special guest tonight. He has been on quite a bit recently, but um, uh, we, we can't get enough of him. It's Jerry O'Connor. And you might remember that Jerry O'Connor uh, sent us a bunch of books, his new book. Um, let me get it out here. He didn't write the tunes. It's a compilation of tunes um, from uh, a collection. The, how do you say this, do you think? Don or, Allen? Oh, I don't know. Don Allen connection, collection? Gorgeous book. Um, anyways, he's been on a mission to record all the tunes in the book, and so he made an offer. Actually, you know, he talks about it in the recording, so he I'm just going to, I'll let him talk about that, and um, he's playing two tunes from the book. If you have the book, you can you can play along. Here we go. Hi, my name is Jerry O'Connor, fiddle player from Dundalk County Louds, and I'm going to play a few tunes from this collection of music that I published last two years ago now. Um, it's a body of tunes from the South Ulster region, which... Weren't have been none of most of these tunes have been published in a hundred years or have been available, and um, a lot of reels, two hundred eighty seven tunes in total, some dance, uh, hornpipes and uh, song tunes, and uh, I played two tunes from it. Um, this was a body of tunes that was part of it was published in nineteen nine, but it is the first time the whole edition has ever been published, and uh, the first tune I'll play is a little tune called uh, "Sweet Molly," and then I'll play a tune after it called the "Downfall," the very first tune actually that's, that's in the collection. So it's going to be part of Tune Supply and I uh, hope you enjoyed its reels. Two reels there, Sweet Molly and The Downfall. And if you fancy buying a copy of the book, I'll send along uh, a dozen uh, audio tracks of your favourite tunes. Just send me a list of a dozen tunes you like and I'll play the audios for you from the book. So thank you to Tune Supply, thank you to Chris 
and to Caitlin, and uh, hope all goes well for you. Thank you. All right. Hey, woo! <laughs> so that's saying... the deal. Um, oh, sorry. Uh, Jerry will record um, 12 tunes from the book for you if you if you buy the book. So. 12? That is an exceptionally large number. Exceptionally large when number. When he sent me the email that said that, I, I wrote back and I said, did you mean two or one? Yeah. Because I thought that it was a typo. Yeah. And it is not a typo. 12 tunes. And I think the reason is he's doing it is because he's trying to get all of them recorded. He's on a mission to record the whole book. Yeah. yeah. So he it's said a good, that uh, incentive, I guess. Yes. He said that when he was... Um, I think working on this collection for his thesis, master's thesis, do I have that right? Something academic. He had to record all of the tunes in the book for the end of the project. Mm. And he did it all in one day or two days or oh something gosh, like that, terrible. like 24 hours of recordings. That and sounds terrible. I, I'm probably having some of the details wrong on this, but it was something like that. He, he did them all. And now he's wanting to, to redo all yeah. the recordings. Cool. So um, I know some of you already have the book, and I'm sure if you already have it and you want to take this offer, um, it is. I'm sure it's still ready to go. And we have three more copies here in New York. And I think you cannot get this book anywhere else in the U.S., as yeah, far as I know. We're the only distributor. We're the only distributor weird, but... of three copies. Yeah. Um, so I put the link in there if you if you want to grab it. It's one of the most gorgeous tune books I've ever seen. It's you could nice. buy all three copies and then get 36 tunes. And then tunes. you could sell them to other people for more money. No, don't do that. <laughs> but you can get 36 you tunes. You could get 36 tunes. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that'd be so many. Yeah. Um, I was adjusting large avocados eyeglasses um, when we came back to the screen there. Yeah. I We haven't done many avocado um uh, segments yet, but there are three avocados now. Yeah. Didn't we think of a good name for one of these and then Probably. Forgot? We've been too busy. We're bad at re remembering anything, I yes. say. Um, but this is large avocado. He's got a great neck because it, it wiggles it's around. It's very floppy. It's very floppy. Um, so many great jokes. I'm just going to say two really quick here. <laughs> Harris Rothman, who I have a feeling knows all of the good jokes. But here's a great one. Question. What did Batman say to Robin before he got into the Batmobile? What? Answer, Robin, get in the Batmobile. <laughs> That's an anti-joke. I love that. I love this type of joke. <laughs> too. Okay, and Castu has another good one. Session player asks the bagpiper, do you know your bag's full of bacteria? The piper responds, no, I don't know that one. Can you hum it for me? <laughs> That's great. Okay, these are all quite excellent. Fantastic. Um... Okay, so I'm, I mentioned Jerry's book, and the other thing is that uh, I just placed an order for new t-shirts because we were yeah. wondering why people weren't weren't ordering t-shirts, and then I went and looked, and the t-shirts are mostly <laughs> gone. Have any. There's hardly any t-shirts. There's only a few, and they're in colors I think that people don't want yeah. or something. Yeah. So I finally placed a new t-shirt order, and there's some new colors coming as well as some tank tops, uh, women's tank tops, yes. and um, they will be heading up to the Tune Supply Alaska headquarters. Um, in, in other words, my Thank mom, you, my mom's house, um, shortly. And as soon as they're there, we'll put them onto the store, and you can look for a nice new summer T-shirt yes. if you'd like. I forgot we had this picture of the Rose in the Gap. This nice interior picture, oh, yeah. so you can see how beautifully typeset the music I know. is. It's it, very easy to read. Chris is very picky about um, music notation, music copying, yeah. music copying, because he does it for for a living, and um, it. It's he very approves. well, very well uh, laid out. Very easy to read. Yes. Um, okay. I think we should have some more tunes from John and Matt. Okay. Welcome back, everyone. Matt, how are you doing? Knock, knock. Who's there? Britney Spears. Britney Spears who? Knock, knock. Who's there? Oops, I did it again. <laughs> <laughs> nice one, Matt. Hey. I think that deserves a few polkas. What do you think? <laughs> sure. The Bas Bally Desmond Trio. Uh, number one, number three, number two. Uh, a minor, G, A minor.
is. Woo! Um, James Cleveland just said, I like these pokas and that's no joke. I agree. And I, and I, um, whenever I hear pokas, I imagine us all at Ma Mario's and James is sitting at the piano because there's a baby grand piano at yes. Mario's and, and also a disco ball. And I imagine James playing the backing for the pokas. Yeah. I'll have to do that sometime soon. Um, okay. I see that uh, big avocado is dancing. Yep. Mega, mega cado, maybe. Mega cado. <laughs> Possibly. Um, okay, so uh, some people did send in uh, pictures <clears throat> on the topic of favorite jokes. I guess it's kind of hard to send your favorite joke in right. a picture. I should have to be told. I should have said that people could um, record like audio yeah, could of jokes, that. but that's okay. Some people did or send videos. in or oh, video yeah. would be great. Yeah. Um, you can always feel free to send videos or audio if you prefer for for any of the themes, or if you want to send us a tune, as some people have have done. Yep. Um, but we have a couple of pictures. Let's see. Okay, so um, of course this is Angela um, Angela Botzer sent in the Jolly Joker. I do not know this one. There's a lot of octaves in that. Yeah, it's a little tricky. Um, good. Okay. A couple from Bob Beamers. This uh, is good. This Great. one got cut off. the The caption got cut off on oh, it. Is it. Is can you move it up? Yeah. Oh yeah. This is a meme, but it's really good. Um, long running family band seeks new concertina player. Must be profession on both Anglo and English. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> That's pretty good. Okay, this is, I think, not a joke, just, just for fun. Um, what was this, this frog's name? We learned this frog's name oh, last shoot. time. I forgot. I forgot. Bob, tell us, tell us what the frog's name yeah. is. Watching Toons Fly. And playing. He had a little cantina there. I'll let you read this one. It's Dan pretty Steiner good. sent this in. So you're little Bobby. Well, Rex here has been going on and on about you for the last 50 years. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> uh, okay. Okay, this is a cool story. So somebody sent us an email, and I don't know this person. Maybe you do. Michael uh, Connery? I don't know him, I don't think. Okay, well, um, they went down to Mario's. Yeah. And uh, apparently it's a really nice... Um, yeah, he said it. she's got it really all set nice, up. Uh, at the outdoor setup she has now. Last time we were there, her outdoor setup was not functioning. But I think that's that was because during it was the, the middle of winter. Yeah, yeah, right. So I guess she's set up, and um, this is what he had to eat, and that looks Sounds spectacular. Yeah. Amazing. Okay, and Peter Kaysen sent this in. <laughs> 264 for intimidation crab meat. <laughs> Um, Excellent. I think I'll pass on that. <laughs> very good pictures. Very yes. good pictures. Um, okay, I still haven't chosen my favorite joke, but I promise I'm going to do it this uh, during this set yeah. because then we have the words. We missed doing words last week. And oh yeah, we missed out. I was pretty sure that nobody was going to comment because I was. I'm pretty sure that nobody likes doing the word game. But then a bunch of people asked where the words were, yeah. which made, made me feel good. Thank you. I don't know if you guys really meant that or not, but um, we do have two words to do today. So um, we'll do a prize for the words and a prize for best joke. And um, uh, Kurt Moonkow asked if the mailing label could be printed with a joke instead of a tune well yes of yep. course we could print anything you want that is black and white <laughs> and not very high resolution and, yeah and not very high resolution okay so um this is oh this is our second set of tunes from uh jim and denise up in anchorage and this is hammer dulcimer as well right? hammer dulcimer and well all you can see okay okay here we go time for fox hunters slip jig this tune's got a groove. Here we go.
I love the matching outfits. Yeah. <clears throat> that was great. And the extra Denise. Yes. Yeah, screen. I love they, how they coordinated their um, hat and vest. Yes. yes. And I don't know if people, people paid attention to their previous set, but I think Jim had coordinated his shirt with his boots. Oh, I didn't even know that. Yeah. Oh, that's excellent. That's that's really, really, really great. Um, and I'm not sure that Jim and Denise know this, but Fox Hunters is one of the Mario's kind of like theme, theme tunes. Yes. Um, so it's all working out perfectly. Excellent. And I saw some people said they, they love that one as well. Okay, I have selected a winner. Now here's here's my criteria for selecting the winner. I, I did not select it based on what I think was the best joke because I feel like that's a really difficult thing to pick and there were some there were too many best jokes. The way that I selected it was I thought to myself, Caitlin, which of these jokes do you remember right now? Right. Which one's stuck in your head? Right. <laughs> because that's a test um, of of the joke. Actually, there were two two that stuck in my head. Um, Peter Kaysen's um, one about the stick. No, it wasn't Peter Kaysen. Peter Morley. Yes. And um, but I I think Peter Morley has won a prize. Has he? I'm not sure. Okay. Well, now I have to give both of them. Okay. So Peter Morley, you get a prize. And the one that I remembered was the first one I read tonight, was, which was from Gordon Nash. Very simple one that was a, di a dyslexic walks into a bra. And I selected because I remembered it because that means that I might actually be able to tell that joke someday. So um, those are the two. If you guys want to um, request a tune or a joke printed on a label, you can just send us a send us an email at tunes at tune supply and we will hook you up. It Serious, might... this is a great prize, you guys. It's very valuable. It's incredible. Uh, one of a kind. Everyone who has received this prize has loved it. Has won the lottery. The next day. The next day. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> John Redmond won the prize did, one time, yeah. um, and look where he is now. He's on the tune supply session. Incredible. <laughs> Um, okay, you do not have to accept the prize, but it's there. And it may take us a little bit of time because we're exceptionally behind right now on stuff. But yes. send us the email and we will we'll get it to you. Okay. Um, <clears throat> word time. We'll oh, yeah. do one more prize for this. I feel um, like the word of the day needs a theme song. Oh, words, yeah. Words of the week. Can you maybe create something there? Maybe next week. I bet you could do something. Maybe. Great. Okay. Well, that'll be your project. Okay. Not that you don't have any other projects to right. be working on. Okay. I've selected two really excellent words today. Um, they're not jokes, but they could be, I suppose. So you can, as usual, tell us what you think these words mean. And you could tell us if you know what they mean, you can say that, although you're unlikely to win the prize. The prize is usually awarded to somebody who creates yeah. um, a clever thing uh, that the word might mean. <clears throat> okay, you ready for this first one? I don't think you are. This is not a dirty word. I just want to say, not. before I say it, it is not a dirty word. It's actually a serious word that is from... Uh, it was first used in 1611. Okay, there you go. They didn't do any dirty jokes at that time. Mm -hmm. um, okay, here we go. Dun, dun, dun. Circumbillivagination is the first word. Yeah. And the second word is pug nozzle. The pug nozzle actually was first used... Um, well, it doesn't say when it was used, but it was uh, first used by Samuel Beckett, who was born in 1906 uh, in Dublin, Ireland, of course. Um, so there you go. You can tell us what you think those two words are. And while you're doing that, um, we have one more joke from uh, John and Matt. Yes, we do. And it, it may be slightly PG-13, and that's totally fine. As I said, uh, classy dirty is totally fine. Which is this one? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Uh, John, how you doing? Uh, good. Yeah. I have a crazy story for you. Couldn't wait to tell you. Oh, yeah? I was out for a few drinks this afternoon in the local, and, I, and somebody was telling me the story about a, a priest, a rabbi, and a preacher that mm. used to go into uh, this pub, not the pub I was in today, but into another one, and they'd meet two or three times a week and just have drinks together. And one day, the preacher was saying that preaching was becoming kind of boring, that it was, there was no challenge anymore in preaching to people. And what would be a great challenge would be, is, would be if they found a bear and they could preach to the bear and convert the bear. And so by the time that they finished drinking that evening, they made a pact that they would find a bear and seven days later, they would report back as to how they got on with the bear. So seven days later, they meet and Father Flannery comes in and he's got a big bandage around his head and. His arm is in a cast and he's a mess. And he said, well, I found the bear and I started reading some Catholic literature to the bear and the bear didn't want to hear any of it. 
So the bear started swiping at me and hitting me and he said I managed to get into my pocket and bring out some holy water and I sprinkled the bear with the holy water and lo and behold the bear became as quiet as a lamb. And in fact the bishop next week is coming out to give the bear his first holy communion. Isn't that, incre isn't that incredible? Yeah. Wow. And so then the preacher he starts talking about his encounter with the bear. He said, I met the bear. I was preaching fire and brimstone. I was preaching the word of the Lord. And he said, the bear just really just started kind of just rearing up and just kind of coming at me. And we started wrestling and we were going down the hill, down the hill, just wrestling, wrestling. And we ended up going into a river. And he said, I managed to dump the bear in the river and I quickly baptized him. And the bear became as meek as a lamb. And he said, for the rest of the day, we just sat there and we just praised the word of Jesus. Amazing. Incredible. And uh, then they looked over at the rabbi and the rabbi was in a wheelchair. The rabbi was in a body cast. The rabbi was IVs just coming out of the rabbi everywhere and just bandaged up. And the rabbi looked up and he said, uh, he said, looking back on it now, he said, Maybe circumcision wasn't the best place to start. Oh, no. Mm-mm. 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 <laughs> Caitlin, I don't think, has actually heard that video yet. <laughs> no. So this is an honest reaction. <laughs> I'm blushing. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully uh, um, nobody found that too offensive. I'm worried about my mom. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh, that was great. Speaking of moms, my mom <clears throat> texted me oh, yeah. a joke um, because I'm not sure that they have figured out how to use the chat. Um, it's good, though. This joke, well, she says, I love this anti joke. What has four legs and barks? A dog. Oh, I guess you heard that one. <laughs> That's really good. Yeah. That's really good. I'm going to have to steal that one, too. I might be able to remember that because it involves an animal. Yeah. Um, but that reminds me of, I, I can't remember, maybe it was Laura who said the one about the bat. Oh, let's see if I can remember it. Um, what do you call a baby bat? Uh, what? <laughs> An alpha bat. No. No. No, that's not, that's not it. <laughs> this is why we don't tell jokes. <laughs> what does a baby, what is it? What is a baby bat? What is a baby bat's favorite food? Oh, yeah. What is a baby bat's favorite food? Alphabet Alpha, soup. Alphabet soup. This is why we don't tell jokes. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so there are a lot of great uh, suggestions about these two funny words. Gordon Nash, if he had not already won, he would have won actually a couple of times. Yes, I saw he has a couple of great ones. Um, the first one, pug nozzle, is where a pug saliva comes out, is actually pretty close to pretty the, close, real direction, yeah. the, the real definition. Um, I haven't read all these most recent ones, but I, I actually have a, a winner. Oh, great. Is that a, do you have one or do you have uh, one? No, I don't have one okay. yet, so you... So this works out well because um, the, the, the person whose name is Melv Goraz, which I think is not his real name, but we know him in the chat, Melv Goraz, um, he wins with his, um, let me find it, circumbilivagination is what one thinks about uh, with that circo, circulonimbus type of cloud. He must mean cumulonimbus. Cumulonimbus type yeah. of cloud. Yes. Okay. So you win, and I know that he has been wanting me to send him a CD of mine. So I would like to do that for your prize, but you have to tell me where your address is. So, yes. um, and I know that he's over in Europe, and that's totally fine. So just send me your address at tunes at tune .supply and I will get you one of we'll my CDs out. into the mail yep. as your prize. Um, that was excellent. And there's some other great ones happening here. Um, uh, Laura Johnson, pug nozzle is when you have a smushed up garden hose. Oh, that's good. Oh, yeah. That's really good. Thomas. Okay, his name right, is Thomas. Right. I knew that. Uh, okay, I'm going to tell you what these are real quick, and then we're going to um, have one more set of, of tunes from John and Matt. Okay, so let's do pug nozzle first. So this is, it's amazing that this word exists. Pug nozzle is a verb. It means to move the nose and lips like a pug dog. We attempted to um, demonstrate this the other day, but yeah. we were not successful. I was successful. Well, yeah. Caitlin was very successful. Uh, you should try it now. No, so I already tried it last night. I'm good. <laughs> okay. um, and that was coined by Samuel Beckett, in addition to a whole bunch of other amazing words that I didn't realize that he, um, he coined. 
there's one vermigrade meaning moving in a worm-like manner i feel like i do that sometimes when i'm trying to get out of bed in the morning yes anyways okay so that's that's one of them and then circumbillivagination is a circular motion or a movement around so it it has it's not dirty in the slightest actually um it does make me wonder where the vagination what the um latin derivation of that is right. but i will look that up but we won't talk well, about it isn't right circum circumambulate circum- is when you go around probably circumbilivate is something yes and then what is vaginating i don't know let's leave it right there yeah. okay um great let's go on to our last set of tunes hi everyone hi matt matt you're a medical doctor aren't you yes i am I studied at the tom jones medical school yeah i I can't get this song, the uh, green, green grass of home, is out of my head. Hmm. Is that common? It's not unusual. Oh, okay. Green, green huh? grass of home. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you see what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Gonna have to do something. <laughs> Tunes, Lady Anne Montgomery, the uh, flogging, and the fine hunt. DGD. One, two, three, and. <laughs> Excellent. Um, <clears throat> that took us a minute to get that joke. 
Yes. Actually, I got it, and I had to explain it to you. Yeah. <laughs> that was good for the last joke, because I feel like that was like a, a, a high-level joke. It's a high-level yeah. joke, and yeah. it's a trad joke, so yeah. um, that's good to go last. That was a great set of tunes, too. That was an excellent Fantastic. set of tunes. Yeah. Uh, Elena Smith said she um, thinks that it's the first one screams Sean O's dancing. Oh, I can see that. I agree. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so we are going to play one more set of tunes with you. Wow, we're coming in like right, right on time. Right this on time today. Ideal. It is ideal. Um, and uh, we're probably just going to go straight to sleep after this because we had to get up really early today. Yes. It was quite unpleasant. Um, anyways, uh, the plan for next week, I'll just mention it again. Um, next week, Chris will be um, in the bubble, so to speak, yep. uh, and I will be here. So we're going to try to run the session from two different locations probably won't work but we'll know more information this weekend we're gonna try we, yeah. if it if for some reason it is not gonna work we will of course send an email to the mailing list if you're not on the mailing list probably a good idea to get on it it is um if you click down into the description and scroll down the the link is down there to sign up um but i think we can do it yes what could we won't be able to play together because no. we can't we can play one at a time yeah you could heckle while I play. Yep, yeah, that's true. I that, probably that will, work. actually. <laughs> you could have all the avocados. Yeah. And they could be dancing. Yep. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, but besides us trying this uh, experiment, the leaders are going to be really great. Nula Kennedy is on. Ooh. She has not been on since New last Eve. summer. Oh, but when did she last host? That summer. was late last summer. A couple, yeah, a couple sessions over the summer, I think. Yeah, she um, she curated this whole session, uh, and the two main leaders are uh, Tara Breen and Nula, and then the guests, I don't have them in front of me, but I think there's three guests that she has selected. Yeah, I don't, off the top of my head, I don't know them. But. Yeah, all from Ireland, so that, that'd be great. And they have also selected an interesting theme. Actually, I should look this up because people might want to think about it. Right. Um, yes, I don't really know what this means, uh, but that makes for the best kind of theme, yeah. actually. The theme that, that Nula selected is increased security. Okay. I just think of the TSA when yeah, I hear yeah, that. Yeah, Although yeah. I don't know if they're Hunting actually security. Uh, increased security or not. But um, so that's that's what will be happening next week, and then we'll keep you updated on the following week because we're not exactly sure yet what will what will be who knows going on at that time. It's supposed to be Killian that week. Um, I can almost guarantee you it won't happen on Thursday. Though, yeah, actually, I think we're probably going to be filming. I can promise you that. Okay, but it might still happen that week on a different day. We'll figure it out and let you know. Yeah. So make sure you get on the mailing list so we can do that. Yeah. Um, okay, I think that's it. So yeah, don't forget to set, yeah. yeah, don't forget to throw some contributions in the box if you can, so we can pay all our um, lovely leaders tonight and the guests and all the rest of the nights as well. Yep. The tunes that I selected for the end here are um, we're sticking with the interesting tune name theme um, and interesting tune type and tune type. These are all slip jigs. Yes. Um, first one, I actually call this tune Cahill McConnell's, but I know that a lot of people know it by the name The Cock and the Hen, F sharp minor, slip jig. Second one is um, Come Under My Dimity. Uh, Some people know that as Wheels of the World, I think. Oh, Come Under My Dimity is but that's a way far more way. evocative. Yes. Um, I'm pretty sure that a dimity is a blanket, I think. Um, that's in the key of G. And the last one is Farewell to Wally Range, which I um, re started teaching my fiddle class, uh, right. level four fiddle class. So hopefully they can join in as well. Kathleen just asked if we could post that link again. Yes, we'll do it after the set. Which one? The, the voting link. Oh, I have it right here. Why okay, don't... let's do it now. Okay, why don't you tell a joke while I do that? I don't have any good <laughs> jokes. I have one, but I can't tell it on uh, YouTube. Why not? Because I can't. It's not appropriate. Oh, okay. It's not appropriate. It's not appropriate. Moms are watching, so yeah. no inappropriate jokes. Um, here is the voting link. I just put it into the into the chat there again. Um, thank you for voting. I don't actually know when the voting closes. Do you? No, we don't know what the prize is or what the I voting don't, is. We don't know anything we about know anything. this. I I do know that the award ceremony is virtual and it is on Friday the twenty third. Yes. So presumably you need to vote before then, <laughs> if you want to vote. Um, okay, let's play some slip jigs here. Great. F sharp minor on the on the front end end of this, so this will be good. And uh, is that old avocado or new avocado? It's old old avocado is gonna play along here. Okay, uh, one, two, three. <laughs>
was great. Perfect for the joke session. Yeah, indeed. Um, uh, what I loved about that set was actually the first moment of the set. Oh, where I didn't come in? <laughs> yes. Yeah. That was good. Some of my best work, I thought. I, I liked it because usually I'm the one who makes mistakes pretty much all the time. I'm the one. I just assume if there's a mistake made that I made the mistake. And so as soon as that happened, I thought, shoot, I must have counted in <laughs> four or something. And then I thought about it. And I was like, nope, I counted that correctly. <laughs> so I think now we're even for, for a while. Yeah. Now I can make 99 more mistakes. Right. Um, well, thanks for sticking around uh, for the joke session. And of course, thank you to our, our guests and leaders. I will let um, Chris do the thank yous as usual. But I just want to say before I forget, I hope to see some of you bright and early tomorrow at Fiddle Hill. Um, I, mentioned... I will not be participating. <laughs> um, you will be sleeping at that well, time. Well, probably not because you will be teaching. Oh, that's true. That's true. It's hard to, hard it's to hard sleep, to sleep through. sleep through the teaching. Yeah. Um, I'm teaching at 10 a.m. Um, something about techniques, I think. Maybe Boeing? I'm not sure. And then uh, also at 1 p.m. tomorrow, I'm teaching another class. And I, I'm, I'm sure it's not too late to sign up if you go over to the Fiddle Hill website. Um, we looked, actually, and there's 85 people in the class. How is that going to work? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's on Zoom, so maybe it's... I don't know. It'll be interesting. But I, I'd love to see you. Um, heckling is always, always appreciated always in my classes. Yes. Um, Inside jokes, heckling puns, the, these things are, are get you extra credit. So yes. I hope to see you over there tomorrow. Somebody has commented about us sounding like we're in a cave, which I think happened because I put the wrong thing on here for a second. Let me see if a I can cave. get it back. Like oh, yeah. Yeah, this definitely sounds like we're in a cave. Like it has reverb? Yeah. Oh. How do we sound? I, it sounds the same to us because we can't hear it. That's I true. it sounds great to you guys. Can you turn us down an octave? Like make us no, really deep voice? No, unfortunately voices? I can't do that. What other things can you do to us? Um, nothing really fun, only reverb. Well, reverb's pretty, it's pretty, pretty great. great. Yeah. Um, I did want to do a, um, remember when we did optical illusions? Oh, yeah. And I wanted to do audio ones. illusions yeah. at one point. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, um, thank, you. thank you to our special guests, uh, Jim and Denise. Great to have you guys on. Yes. And Jerry O'Connor, oh my gosh, what an honor. Yes. Um, everyone go by the book. We only I have think, two copies left. Someone yeah, bought somebody it. Yeah, somebody bought the book. So, so there's two, two copies left. left. Yeah. Um, and of course, John Redman and Matt Stapleton. Fantastic, fantastic. As always, we um, it's always a joy to have you guys on. So thank you. Yeah. And if you if you can't get enough of John and Matt, which who can't really, they have a whole bunch of other sessions that they did for us on equally hilarious themes. Yes. Uh, favorite movies, favorite. It's all good. Favorite literature. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, poetry and literature. Poetry and literature. Was the first yeah, one. yeah. Oh, so good, so good. Okay, so the, all the, actually, I, I'm sure you guys all know, but all the sessions are in a playlist now. This is number 68, so you can go back and watch those mm -hmm. at your leisure. Okay, so um, we will see you from uh, different locations next week, okay. hopefully, and um, enjoy your enjoy your week. See ya. Bye.